On December 30th, 2012, I attended a service at the uh, Church of Brook Hills in Birmingham, Alabama. It's a church with a couple thousand people going there. And they supposedly emphasize the Bible. And I just wanted to talk about this is typical of really any church today that supposedly emphasizes the Bible in that what they're really doing is they're, re they're teaching their own religion and they're supposedly using the Bible to support it. But yet the passages they use don't support what they're saying because they're not teaching what the Bible says. They're teaching their own doctrine. And this is just a, a great example. The title of this message was Christian Faithfulness and Covenant Storytelling. And the basic message was that we need to be telling the generations um, that follow us the covenant story. Um, what I understood him to say, the covenant story, was the gospel and that we need to be teaching the gospel. And the gospel that they said was that we need to believe in Jesus' death and well, we need to turn from our sins first and then we need to believe in Jesus' death as atonement for our sins. But yet, this, there's really no scriptural support for this. The scripture they gave was Psalm 78 and verse 5. It says, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might see their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation. This passage here tells you nothing about the gospel message. But really, it's back in the Psalms, which was God's covenant with the nation of Israel, and it had to do with following the commandments of God. And that's what it said. It says that they should keep His commandments and not be stubborn and rebellious. It has nothing to do with trusting in Jesus as your Savior. And then they also used the scripture of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Again, you have the principle of teaching the children. Nothing wrong with that, but it has nothing to do with teaching them the gospel. It's again under Israel's covenant, teaching them to obey the commandments. These passages here specifically say that in order to be God's people, you need to keep the commandments. But yet this person who is preaching was telling us that we need to turn from our sins and then believe in Jesus' death as atonement for our sins. And it really goes to show how you can't really, how, why people who go to church today are really confused and they don't understand the Bible because when you go to these pastors and you hear them talk by what they say you can't trust what the Bible says because if I'm going to believe what the Bible says it says I need to keep the commandments to be saved I need to teach the commandments to my children but yet the pastor says nothing of this the pastor says you need to turn from your sins and believe the gospel Okay, so maybe this is just an example of teaching your children, and he does get to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is the gospel, which I was surprised because um, that he actually gave this. And so then he reads what the gospel is, and I think, okay, now we're getting somewhere. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and then he was buried, and then he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's the gospel right there for today. Believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins. And he read it, so I think, okay, now he's going to set them straight. But he doesn't. What he said was, the gospel is to turn from your sins and then to trust in Jesus' death. Nowhere in there are we told that we need to turn from our sins. And in fact, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If we had the capacity to turn from our sins in ourselves, then we wouldn't need Christ's death. 
But Christ came and died for us while we were yet sinners. But yet this church would have you believe that you need to turn from your sins and then believe, the, and then believe in Jesus' death. Then they conclude the message after telling you that that's what the gospel is and that we need to pass it down from generation to generation even though they have given no verses to support it and the verses actually are contradictory saying you need to obey the law not believe in Jesus' death as, as far as Psalm 78 and Deuteronomy 6 passages are concerned. And then they conclude the message by saying how we need to fulfill the Great Commission of Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. And notice what verse 20 says there. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Well, what are the things that Jesus commanded the disciples to observe? Go back to Matthew 23. Matthew 23, verse 2, saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. So what the Lord Jesus Christ commanded his disciples to do was the law of Moses. And he said to go out and teach the nations to observe the law of Moses. So the whole point is the, the message was very confusing. If you look at the scripture and you compare it to what he said, the two contradict each other. And it really goes to show you why the church is in such a bad state. This is just an example. You, I could pick any church and where they read scripture and pretty much 99% of them would be a similar type thing where they read scripture to supposedly support their message but yet their message is contradictory to what the scripture says. And so there's a couple points here. One is that what it ends up doing is the congregation then cannot trust in what the scripture says because there's no way that you would get from Psalm 78 and from Deuteronomy 6 that you are to teach the that Jesus to turn from your sins and then Jesus died for your sins as the gospel when those passages say to teach the commandments of God, to teach the law, the statutes, the judgments of God. And so then that creates a distrust in the Bible by the congregation. And they have to go to the pastor to have the pastor tell them what that, those passages really mean. And they also will do things like say, well, a better translation is this. Or let's go to the Greek and the Greek really means this. Or the Hebrew really means this. And all that is is just an effort to take you away from God's word and bring you into the religion that they're teaching. And then the people, if they read scripture, they don't believe what the scripture says. Because what the pastor says is different from what the scripture says. And they think they have to go to the pastor then to get the understanding. Because there's no way they can get that understanding like that by just taking it literally. Because it's not in the passage. What the pastor says is contradictory. It also shows you that the system, the theological seminaries that are set up in the U.S. all around the world. Those seminaries are teaching people to be ministers of Satan, to teach things that aren't in the passage. There's no way you would get from Deuteronomy 6 and from Psalm 78 that you are to pass down a message of turn away from your sins and believe in Jesus' death as atonement for your sins. In fact, that message is nowhere to be found in the scriptures. There is no turn from your sins first because you're incapable of doing that. You have to have Jesus you have to have faith in God in order to be saved regardless of the dispensation and so it's showing that the theological seminaries are teaching them to be these false ministers and that's exactly what the scripture said um, in, back in the days of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 he says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works and so if you go to Christian churches today and they are not taking the Bible as their final authority but they are teaching something contradictory to what the scriptures they are reading is saying then you know they are ministers of Satan and you should not be listening to them and so I send this video out as a warning to all those people who go to the church at Brook Hills and to any other church who does the same thing make the Bible your final authority and when your pastor says something different than what the scriptures say don't believe him stop listening to him he's a minister of Satan he may not be doing that on purpose he may have a good intent but the fact is he's leading you astray with false doctrine it should not be believed and the whole reasoning behind that reason they do that is because of what we see in uh, 2nd Timothy and chapter 4 
Verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's exactly what's... There's a fable, a which is a story with a moral behind it, and that story is given that that you can be saved by turning from your sins first and that's we are incapable of doing that and the reason they teach false doctrine and don't teach the truth is because the people will accept it that because they have itching ears it gives them something they want to hear it satisfies their flesh and thinking there is something I can do I can turn from my sins and so Jesus cross his the offense of the cross has ceased because in my flesh I do something that brings me into eternal life with the Lord and so people having those itching ears that satisfies the flesh it brings the flock you have more people coming that's why you have a couple thousand people going to that church it satisfies the human good side of them and then it results then in those pastors receiving money and that's what it says in first timothy chapter 6 verse 3 if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings evil surmisings perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself and what they're doing is verse 9 says first timothy 6 9 but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men into in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows so you have people who may start with good intentions they end up going to a theological seminary that seminary teaches them how to draw the crowd to get money and then they go and they teach they've erred from the truth erred from the faith teaching false doctrine which the itching ears of men who are living in the flesh will acquiesce to and feel good about and so then they'll flock to those people give them their money and then those people are satisfied because they have the money that they craved but the result is the spiritual destruction of the souls of the people in the congregation and so I send this video out as a warning take your Bible as your final authority and if someone teaches something contrary and they quote passages and you're saying well that's not what that passage says it's something different then you need to question them and if they don't have a good answer if they can't prove from scripture that what they're saying is what God's word is for us today then you need to flee from them get away from them because they'll lead you to the path of destruction